Imagine this. For centuries, textbooks told a comforting story. That the Basques, high in the Pyrenees, were Europe's untouched survivors. A living relic from the Ice Age, a people apart, unchanged since mammoths still roamed the plains. But when scientists opened the graves beneath Iberia's soil, that story cracked open. Ancient bones whispered a truth no historian had dared to tell. Between 2500 and 2000 BCE, something happened. Something violent, sudden, and absolute. Under the microscope, their DNA didn't echo the past. It screamed of replacement. A new lineage, carrying the signature of the far-off Pontic Caspian steppe, swept into Iberia and erased almost every male bloodline that had existed before. The data was clear. Nearly 40% of the genome changed, but the Y chromosomes, those marks of fatherhood, were completely replaced. It wasn't slow blending. It was a reset. Archaeologists call it a demographic revolution. A genetic earthquake. Villages vanished. Male graves stopped repeating old lineages. And from the ashes of those fathers rose one name. R1B DF27. A single mutation, born in chaos, that would unite every corner of northern Iberia. Basques, Catalans, Galicians, long before they had nations, flags, or borders. Picture it. An ancient land where every man's Y chromosome carried the same silent scar, traced back to that upheaval 4,000 years ago. And yet, their descendants became anything but the same. One people would seal themselves off from the world, preserving the Iron Age in their blood. Another would open its ports and mix with empires. A third would turn west, facing the Atlantic, carrying echoes of Celts and Africans alike. The science gives us the mutation. But culture, language, and time, they made three different destinies from the same genetic storm. So the question that begins everything is not who came first, but how three children of one Bronze Age cataclysm grew into strangers across the same peninsula. And to find that answer, we climb into the mountains where time itself seems to have stopped, where the Basque valleys built walls of stone and silence, Catalonia built harbors. The mountains that sheltered one people became gateways for another. Here, on the edge of the Mediterranean, ships from worlds apart dropped anchor. Greek sailors from Empuries, Roman legions from Taraco, each unloading not just goods, but genes, languages, gods. For a thousand years, the Catalan coast breathed in the sea. DNA still remembers those tides. In medieval bones, scientists found something startling. A quarter of their ancestry lifted from the eastern Mediterranean. A quiet signature of empire written into the genome. A hint of Italy, of Greece, of the Levant, blended into Iberian blood. Under the microscope, Catalonia looks like a palimpsest. Layers of stories written, erased, and written again. New Y chromosome. Branches appear. RM167, born here on Iberian soil alongside J2 and G2, markers that once sailed with Phoenician traders and Roman soldiers. Each lineage, a ship in a genetic harbor. Each empire, a wave that left salt on the shore. Yet not everything survived the crossing. Power changes hands, faith replaces faith, and every new conquest edits the code a little more. History leaves fingerprints, but it also wipes some away. Imagine walking the Roman roads near Tarragona, the stones whispering in Latin beneath your feet, and knowing that the people who built them still live in your cells. But faintly, because what came next would cleanse more than monuments, it would reach into blood itself. The next centuries would turn faith into a filter and empire into an instrument of erasure. The genes that once carried the voices of Greeks, Romans, and Moors would begin to vanish, slowly, methodically, until only traces were left in a few Catalan surnames. Because what the Romans brought, the Reconquista almost erased. Genetically Celtic. Geographically Iberian. A contradiction wrapped in ocean mist. Who exactly are the Galicians? Their land leans into the Atlantic like a memory refusing to sink. The sea sings in their music, bagpipes, laments, ballads that sound more Irish than Spanish. But this isn't just culture, 
its code, because deep inside Galician DNA, scientists found echoes that stretch across the ocean, to Ireland, to Brittany, to Scotland. A shared genetic rhythm marked by the same paternal lineage, R1B, the great Atlantic signature that binds the western edge of Europe together. Trinity College researchers trace this connection back to the thaw of the Ice Age. When glaciers melted, it wasn't the north that repopulated Europe, it was the west. The DNA trail moves from Iberia to the Isles, not the other way around. In that story, Galicia wasn't an endpoint, it was a beginning, a cradle of wanderers who sailed north, carrying Europe's recovery in their blood. Even today, Galician mtDNA tells the same tale, H3, the maternal echo of those early women who survived the cold. 8% of Galician mothers still carry it. 8% whispering of caves, stone tools, and the first sunrise over a green Atlantic coast. And yet, the paradox doesn't end there. Because while their genes tie them to Celtic kin, their soil tells a more complex truth. For centuries, Galicia stayed apart, mountain shadowed, windswept, overlooked. Isolation protected the old bloodlines, but it also turned them into a time capsule. And when scientists cracked that capsule open, they didn't find just Celts. They found something impossible. Hidden beneath the layers of Atlantic continuity, modern sequencing exposed an ancestry that no myth could explain. A signal from the South. Faint, persistent, undeniably African. It doesn't belong to the Celts of legend. It belongs to traders, soldiers, and forgotten travelers who crossed the strait long before history bothered to write their names. Galicia, it turns out, carries more Africa in its veins than anyone ever imagined. Three regions, three stories, and one single mutation that binds them all. When scientists traced the paternal lines of northern Iberia, they found a scar, a genetic watermark born around 4,200 years ago, at the height of that Bronze Age upheaval. The mutation had a name, R1B-DF27, and like a river splitting into deltas, it branched into three destinies. In the Basque country, it became RM153, a lineage that froze in time, untouched, unblended, preserved like amber beneath the Pyrenean stone. Every test confirms it. Basque men still carry the same genetic thread their Iron Age ancestors did, a father-to-son inheritance uninterrupted for three millennia. Isolation didn't just protect their language, it protected their chromosomes. In Catalonia, the same ancestral root mutated again, RM167, shaped by sea winds and open harbors. Mediterranean sailors, Roman colonists, merchants from the east, their footprints layered over this same lineage, expanding it, diversifying it, turning one branch of a single tree into a network that stretched from Greece to Girona. And then comes Galicia, facing west, its version of R1B sailing out along the Atlantic route, the Atlantic modal haplotype, the mark of seafarers of the people who reached Brittany, Ireland, Scotland a genetic echo of the westward migrations that rewrote post-Ice Age Europe. Three identities, three languages, one mutation, the same fathers, but completely different destinies. One chose silence and mountain refuge, one opened its gates to empire, one turned toward the sea and the setting sun. And yet, all of them share the same Bronze Age route, the same buried upheaval that replaced nearly every male line in Iberia. It's a paradox written in blood. Unity at the source, diversity in the outcome. So what really defines a people, their shared bloodline, or the boundaries they built to remember or forget who they once were? Because when you follow the genome far enough, it tells you something unsettling. Purity is an illusion, and continuity is a choice. Long before the farmers came, before the herders and the Bronze Age storms, there were people already here, people who hunted in the shadows of glaciers, who watched the last ice retreat from the Pyrenees. Their story, for 10,000 years, lay buried beneath younger bones and louder histories. But their DNA still breathes in the caves of Iberia. When scientists opened the skeletons from El Portalon Cave, deep in the Atapuerca Mountains, the genome they found shocked them. It was old, 5,000 years old. 
and yet unmistakably familiar, almost identical to that of modern Basques. A whisper from a world before farming, before Indo-Europeans, before history began to write itself. Across Iberia, Mesolithic hunter-gatherers already showed substructure, north and south, coast and plain, as if the peninsula itself was shaping the people who lived upon it. Then came the Neolithic farmers from Anatolia, bringing seed and pottery, mixing but never erasing what was already here. Somewhere in that fusion, Iberia became a genetic island of its own, a place where ancient bloodlines survived even as the rest of Europe changed. Now, with new whole genome sequencing projects, Golomics, Basque Genome 2024, scientists are hunting those deeper traces, the maternal haplogroups that might link modern Iberians to the first Europeans who repopulated the continent after the glaciers melted. If proven, it would rewrite the map again. Because it would mean the Basque homeland wasn't just a refuge of memory, it was the cradle from which Europe was reborn. And that possibility forces one final question. If identity is carried in genes older than language, older than civilization itself, then what are we really remembering when we say who we are? Because every genome is not just data, it's a diary of survival, written in code instead of ink, waiting for the next sequence to turn the page. And perhaps in the next discovery, we'll find the answer to where Europe truly began. Next episode, Before the Ice Melted.